What lies in front of you is a 2011 Hyundai Sonata with 193,000 miles. Now, the Sonata was originally introduced in 1985 as a South Korean competitor to the mid-size sedan segment. And the Sonata on the totem pole of Hyundai Sedan in 2011 is above the Accent and the Elantra, this being the third on the list in the hierarchy. Now, this Sonata was around in the sixth generation, as they're currently eight generations, this belonging in the sixth from 2009 to 2014, as this is a 2011 model itself. Sales of the Sonata have been pretty good over this past decade, peaking at 233,000 sales in 2012, which is a very strong number and a very competitive market of the mid-size sedans. Now, in this video, I'll be taking you around the 2011 Sonata, showing all its various features and characteristics, and seeing where it falls in the Lemonless Evaluation Scale. Stay tuned. Moving to the front of the exterior of the 2011 Sonata, as you can see here, you have your three-tiered grille with some chrome lining around the grille itself with the Hyundai badge resting in the middle. You have these long swooping headlights on the exterior. And one nice little touch on Hyundai's part, you have these hood lines to give it a bit of a chiseled look, as you can see. It looks a little better from a distance, but it's got this pretty nice overall exterior design on the hood of this vehicle. So moving to the interior of the 2011 Sonata, one thing I want to point out, this thing has a very large steering wheel for a mid-size sedan. This thing is almost the size of the steering wheel of my F-150, which is pretty weird. Usually uh, mid-size sedans have some, like, not super small, but definitely, sm like, slightly smaller steering wheels. This thing has a very large wheel for a mid-size car. Nonetheless, moving to the various features equipped on your steering wheel, as you can see here, your various uh, call, talk, and text buttons, as you can see with your voice control settings. You have your various um, trip odometer and your reset button for your gauge cluster. And the other features equipped on your steering wheel on the right side, you have your various cruise control settings right here, turn it on and off, your various uh, speed settings in case you wanna increase or decrease your speed. And to the left side of the steering wheel, you have your various radio controls, your volume knob, all the various features that you have right at your fingertips as opposed to reaching over to the center stack in case um, to kind of give you a bit of a safer overall adaptive touch. Moving to the gauge cluster of the 2011 Sonata, as you can see, it's a very nice overall look of the gauge cluster. You have these two very large gauges and a little screen in the middle, as you can see. Um, currently, it's displaying your uh, your current uh, fuel range is at 124 miles to empty. Um, this vehicle goes pretty good MPG, I believe, in the high 20s. I will um, get that information later in the video. Nonetheless, though, it's an overall a nice appealing look in the gauge cluster of this vehicle. And one other cool little touch on the infotainment system that I want to point out, if you can see, if I can, let's see, get my camera in a little closer. On the temperature gauge and the fuel gauge of the Sonata, as you can see, there's they're like little bars that kind of read out um, the overall uh, temperature and the fuel as this. Kind of a cool little touch opposed to, you know, just a very generic um, dial on most vehicles. So continuing with the interior of the 2011 Sonata, as you can see here, you have your eco button in case you want to try and get some better fuel economy in your Sonata. You have your traction control button in case it is raining like it is today, as you can see the lovely weather. But um, yeah, you have your traction control, you have your fuel tank, you have your trunk button. Um, ironically, I filmed a Chrysler 200 a couple days ago, and it was the only vehicle I've ever seen with a trunk button that's an actual button as opposed to a latch. And ironically, the first car that I reviewed after that has the same one, so just a bit of an ironic touch. So moving to the center stack of the 2011 Sonata, as you can see up top, you have your uh, digital clock right here. Pretty simple, the blue background readout. Uh, moving down below those, you can see <clears throat> you have your Bluetooth settings in case you want to hook up your phone, listen to music in your Sonata. You have your various radio settings as well, your AM, FM, your various uh, volume knobs on each side, and your info and other settings as well. Uh, continuing down below those, you can see you have six radio presets down here, pretty nice. 
And below all of your radio information, you have your various AC controls. As you can see here, you have your defrosters, your various AC settings. And one unique touch on this Sonata that I want to point out is just the sheer size of the fan control settings of where you want the airflow to flow. Um, instead of usually having a little button, Hyundai provides you with a very large uh, kind of image of a human to ensure you have the proper direction of your airflow. Bit of a unique touch, not, not a flaw, just a bit of a unique uh, touch on Hyundai's part. And over here you have your four different fan speeds and your various temperature knob right here. And if you look below, as you can see, if you press this button, you could uh, drop the center storage. It's a very small compartment, but if you want a little extra storage, hit this button, it'll drop, and you will see some extra storage. So assessing the overall comfort of the 2011 Sonata, as you can see, you have these cloth padded seats with a bit of a spotted pattern on them. Um, overall, you have a pretty good side support in each of the seats, as you can see, you have a pretty uh, thick uh, side support for the seats. And overall, a pretty decent sized seat overall, not huge like the size of a pickup truck, but a good size overall to the seats and pretty comfortable in case you want to go on a long road trip. They're not as, you know, fancy as a fully uh, fledged Mercedes-Benz, however, um, they got some pretty good uh, overall comfort to the uh, interior seats of the Sonata. So moving to the rear seats of the 2011 Hyundai Sonata, um, the overall rear uh, legroom is pretty good, honestly. This seat is pushed fairly far back, and I still have a decent amount of legroom. <clears throat> I'm about 5'10", so if you have some larger passengers, they could probably squeeze back in here too if you want to hold a small crew in your Sonata. Um, overall, there's nothing too uh, extravagant or outlandish uh, in the back of the Sonata. The overall comfort is the same as the front, pretty much, as you can see. Same seat quality in the rear as it is in the front. Um, the only, like, you know, kind of unique uh, feature in the back of this is, as most other sedans, if not all of them have this, if you pull out this little storage slot right here, you have two cup holders for your rear passengers or an armrest in case you're going on a bit of a road trip. But um, as every other sedan has this, Hyundai has the same thing in the rear of theirs in the Sonata, but just, you know, an overall basic backseat, nothing too outlandish, but fine for whatever you need. So getting behind the wheel of the 2011 Hyundai Sonata, um, first thing you notice, this thing's got a you know pretty good uh, kick to it. You know, it's got a four cylinder underneath the hood, so it's got you know pretty avid power for the size of this vehicle. It's got pretty good acceleration, which is nice. A um, little, little peppier than some of the other mid-size sedans that I have driven, honestly. Like I drove a 200 the other day. This is just a little quicker than that. I mean, and as far it's not as quick as a you know a Beamer, but on a more um, Comparing it to a Nissan Altima Coupe or maybe an Accord, it's got a pretty similar kick to that, honestly. Maybe if not a little bit better than that. Um, one thing I will say, like one thing that's like a little bit, um, not annoying, but like odd, is like the, the driver or the, um, the gas pedal is a little small. If you have like kind of larger feet like I do, it might be a little bit, um, you know, not cumbersome, but a little bit awkward to get used to at first. Um, but the pedal size in this is similar to the Honda Civic. However, this is a bit larger than the Civic. Um, overall though, you know, um, the handling on this vehicle is pretty fine. The comfort is pretty good. Like I said, the seats are pretty big. Um, you got pretty good um, side bolstering too, like the uh, Lexus IS had. Um, so, you know, just pretty good overall um, comfort in this vehicle, which is nice. Um, you know, it's got a little bit of a, of a body roll, you know, granted it's a, you know, mid-sized sedan. It's not, it doesn't have like extreme precision, like, you know, a full-fledged German sedan, but you know, you can't be expecting that when you're, you know, you're stepping into a, a mid-2010 uh, Hyundai. But um, still, you know, overall it's everything is, um, you know, pretty solid, you know, pretty comfortable ride. And, you know, the, and the quality of everything is like, it, it's, it's, it's fine. You know, if you want a simple car to get you from point A to point B, uh, you'll be good to go. So uh, the turning radius of this vehicle is uh, pretty good overall, you know, it, it's pretty maneuverable. It's not a large vehicle, which is nice. Take another turn right here. The turning radius of this thing is fine. It's not a large vehicle. It's easy to maneuver and go from, you know, in a tight little crevice. You know, it's not some large, it's not a, a, as big of a sedan as say an Impala or uh, an S-Class. It's a much more maneuverable vehicle. Uh, road noise, you know, it's, as, as is expected, it's a mid-size, um, you know, um, entry-level sedan, so it, it, it's fine, you know, it's not going to be, like, totally suppressed like a larger vehicle, but, you know, just if you want a simple car with decent quality, uh, get you from point A to point B, the Sonata is a good option for you. 
It is now time for the interview section in which I answer six generic questions one would ask when going to purchase a vehicle. Question number one is, do I like the Sonata? And the answer is yes. If you're looking for an overall generic vehicle or an entry-level vehicle that will last you a pretty good amount of time if you keep it and maintain it properly, uh, the Sonata will do exactly that for you. So yes, I do like the Sonata. Question number two of the interview section is, what is my favorite part about the Sonata? And that would either be the economicalness of the Sonata or the little bar graph uh, readout of the gauge clusters and the fuel gauge, as I previously mentioned in the video. Pretty cool touch on Hyundai's part, honestly. Question number three of the interview section is, what is my least favorite part about the Sonata? And that would just be like the overall uh, plastic qualities of the interior. However, um, you know, when you're going to buy a Sonata or any, just a, a Hyundai, a Chrysler, like a more entry level vehicle, you can't be expecting, you know, full fledged, you know, leather wrapped everything, but take it with a grain of sand, but being nitpicky, that's my least favorite feature about the Sonata. Question number four of the interview section is, what is the most outlandish feature of the 2011 Hyundai Sonata? This would be the massive airflow feature feature you are provided with in this vehicle. <laughs> kind of a unique touch on Hyundai's part. Question number five of the interview section is, is the Hyundai Sonata worth its value? And I would say yes. You could get a brand new Sonata, a 2020, for a little over $20,000. So, you know, these things, well, they do appreciate, don't get me wrong, as most cars do. However, if you want a cheaper vehicle, especially a brand new cheaper vehicle, uh, that is a great bargain if you're looking for a new vehicle. So, yes, I would say the Hyundai Sonata is worth its value. Question number six of the interview section is, would I ever want or own the 2011 Hyundai Sonata? And the answer is no. Um, while, you know, this car is very economical and practical, I myself would not want to personally own one. However, like I said multiple times throughout this video, uh, you know, if you're looking for a nice car to get you from point A to point B, you know, it'll last you if you uh, maintain it properly. Um, this car is great for you, but personally, I would not want to own it myself, though. Now that we've evaluated the Hyundai Sonata's characteristics and features, it's time to see where it falls in the Lemonlift Evaluation Scale. Before I begin, I would like to thank my friend Luke for lending me a Sonata for the production of this video. Now on with the scoring. Starting with the exterior, the Sonata is an average looking car, not ugly, but not breathtaking, earning a 5 out of 10. Interior on the Sonata is pretty bland, with a lot of cheap dark plastic, earning a 4 out of 10. Road upon on the Sonata is also mediocre, as the cloth seats are fine, but not great, earning a 4 out of 10. MPG on the Sonata is good for its size, having a combined estimated MPG of 29.5 miles per gallon, earning a 7 out of 10 on the MPG scale. Storage on the Sonata is average, having reasonable rear seat room and trunk space for its size, earning a 5 out of 10 for storage. Character on the Sonata is poor, as this is an incredibly generic sedan, earning a 1 out of 10 for character. Wishes on the Sonata is decent, for 20 grand you're equipped with a decent amount of features, but nowhere near close to optimum technological standards, earning a 6 out of 10 for wishlist. Handling on the Sonata is slightly better than anticipated, having fair acceleration and reasonable handling for a sedan, earning a 4 out of 10. Excitement on the Sonata is low as expected, as you will see at least 10 of these in your development alone, earning a 1 out of 10 for excitement. Stupidity in the Sonata is adequate. Let me remind you, this is a good thing. The higher the stupidity score, the less amount of stupid features there are. The Sonata does not have many weird touches aside from the massive airflow buttons and the odd infotainment design, earning a 7 out of 10 for stupidity. Pricing on the Sonata is a strong point for this vehicle, as mentioned numerous times throughout the video. Like I said, this is an economical car if you have a low budget or want a simpler car, earning an 8 out of 10. Engine response on the Sonata is better than I expected, having a reasonable pep for a 2 liter 4 cylinder, still the Sonata is no sports car, and earns a 5 out of 10 for engine responsiveness. And overall amenities in the Sonata is mediocre, this car doesn't have much more than a radio and AC, not even possessing a small screen, leather seats, or a sunroof. For these reasons, I can't give the Sonata more than a 5 out of 10 for overall amenities. And altogether, you get a grand total of 62 out of 130, divided by 13 categories is 4.77. With a score of 62, the 2011 Sonata only outduels 4 of the 26 cars on the Lemon list, 3 of which it is reasonably newer than. For the sake of comparison, the Sonata has better quality and features than the Chrysler 200, but lags behind the similar vehicles from its era like the Volkswagen Passat and Nissan Altima Coupe. The modern competitors like the newer Honda Civic, Honda Accord, Toyota Corolla, and the Chevy Malibu simply have nicer quality and tech with far better reliability. While Sonata isn't the greatest car among those on the lemon list, it is an affordable option for many in the mid sized sedan market, suiting its purpose in the vehicular world. Stay tuned for more vids in the store, and as always, thanks for watching.